morning everyone i'm really excited today is our third coaching coffee hour and i'm going to be speaking with tijen jenko about different strategies to become more resilient so i hope you joined us for the last two if you didn't you can catch them in the recordings the first was about detachment the second was about being present and today we're going to be chatting about finding something you can manage and value as a third strategy for becoming more resilient hey kathy how you doing, girl? Good to see you here. I've got Tijen. She'll be coming on in just a minute. And we'll get started chatting. Leah, hey, welcome everyone. Good to see you gals. So I was just saying we're going to be chatting here in a minute with Tijen Jenko. This is our third chat of the month for April's Coaching Coffee Talks around resilience. First one was on detachment, as I said. The second one was on being present as another strategy to become more resilient. And the one today is on finding something that you value um, so that you can manage resilience. Hey, everyone. Waiting on Tijin, and we'll get started. Where's everyone connecting from today? Where are you in this big wide world? I know where a couple of you must be. Yes, Leah, they're recorded. They're on Lemon Rebellion's Instagram profile. And um, you can see them on the recordings, the recording section there, which I think is a little different than where some of the, the regular posts come up. I'll, I'll show you later. All right, from Virginia. Awesome. Quito. Oh, Kathy, you're back in Quito. Awesome. That's good news. Hi. Good evening, <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? I am Hello. great. Good to see you. You are looking great <laughs> as always. <laughs> Thank you. I have the lighting right today. No lipstick on my teeth. I'm ready to go. <laughs> how are you? I'm well. Thank you. I've been up oh. since 3 a.m. <laughs> it's oh. like half of the day. <laughs> was that on purpose or you just woke no, up early? No, no. On purpose of the nature. Yeah, I something happened to me like that last night. I did not sleep well. It's as if I never fell asleep the entire night. How odd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad that we're both here today. Resilient, awake, ready to go. And I was telling everyone this is our third chat of the month. We've got one more on these strategies for resilience. And we're excited to hear from you today. Today is about finding, I have to look over here at my notes. I said it two times already, but my memory is... Finding, well, finding something, something you can manage and value. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Did you hear those little paws? Those are my cats running back and forth oh, across the floor and almost right. knocked over my, my wheel here. <laughs> anyway, so tell us how is finding something you can manage and value related to resilience? Uh, yeah, I am going to tell, but somebody is asking if we're going to share the video. I think, yes, we are going to do that. Um, we often do it after our session. And then I uh, post it also in my YouTube channel when I receive the recording uh, from Jamie. Sometimes it takes a few days, um, but they will also be there. Okay, awesome. yes. What is your YouTube channel? Why don't you mention what that, that link, the name of it is so that people can find it? Well, that's the thing that I will invite people to subscribe because um, until I have sufficient subscribers, I can't brand it to my All name. Right. <laughs> they yes. need to look for Jenko Coaching on YouTube. All right, cool. I'm happy to include the link too in the comments below the video on Instagram and Facebook so it's easier to find. That will be great. Thank All you. All right, sure. Pleasure. Yeah. So um, finding something we can uh, manage and value relates to resilience. That's the today's topic. <laughs> Is because when we are facing with something larger than us, larger than we have experienced before. Those are the traumatic experiences. And as we talked before, it could be very different thing for very different people. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, it could be little thing for somebody and it could generate larger impact for someone else. Um, we lose our ability to stay in the moment as we talked for the first and the second step. And when we do that, we are um, almost 
sucked into this black hole <laughs> of the trauma, yeah. then we feel like we can't do anything. It has actually that sort of an impact often, that uh, numbing impact. Mm -hmm. Then, um, and our mind goes into analyzing that, whatever it is, then we lose to our ability to respond even a simple thing like having a breakfast or whatever. So when we start figuring out, okay, what do I value? For example, I gave this uh, example in the article, um, mm -hmm. which we can also again include that. Sure. Um, when I had a diagnosis uh, with breast cancer, it was very large for me to manage. And I was thinking, and I didn't also like the Western approach into the treatment, but my logical part of me said, okay, maybe I need to use that part also. Then it also created um, emotional effect for me that I was mm -hmm. in control right. of my own health and my own treatment besides the diagnosis, right? Mm -hmm. So then I needed to find a way to get a grip on this is something I'm valuing, which is my health. Mm -hmm. well, how do I do that when I am giving the control to the doctors? Um, then I realized I am still in charge of my own nutrition, my cooking. Yes. Right. So that's something I value and I can still manage then it feels like um, I am in charge, at least some part of this thing. I am contributing. I can actually function within mm -hmm. that scope. Mm -hmm. And I have a handle of, on something. So even that um, the person's, whatever they find, may not be fully related to the trauma. It still is helpful, but when they find something inside the domain of the trauma, it actually, I use the word empowering instead of empowering. Yeah. It empowers you much more. That gives you much more confidence. That's what I meant with that step. That's really useful. So I'll just summarize what I've understood and leave comments. Thank you there for saying she loves this concept. Leah loves that concept. I do too. So within something big and traumatic that feels out of control, you know, in your case, this was the, the breast cancer and moving towards giving doctors some authority to kind of help you out. You're able to take over your nutrition so we can look for something small within that bigger thing that may feel and maybe is completely out of our control. Look for small things within it that we can actually make an impact on to feel like we're contributing to somehow managing or reducing the, the level of trauma that's happening in a difficult circumstance. That's how I've understood it. Yes, beautifully said. And um, I wouldn't, um, maybe by small, we don't mean to make it like a um, lesser impactful, but a par yes. partial of something partial. larger, right? A part yes. of it. Um, that even if they, like I said, it could be something different. Um, it may at least look something different, like taking a walk, but it still is relevant to whatever yeah. it is. Um, let's say that uh, purchasing a house is a big mm -hmm. thing for somebody mm -hmm. and they may get frazzled by that, but um, maybe getting a haircut while purchasing the house is yeah, still something, right? So right. if they're valuing how they look, a good hair day is not going to hurt it. <laughs> <laughs> we know that as curly women, we know that. <laughs> so whatever it is, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's very, very helpful. And we've got some comments here. This is speaking to you right now. I'm really glad to hear that. Also, feel free to leave any comments. You, if you have something specific you'd like to ask Tijen or like us to bring up here to talk about we can do that won't, won't mention your name or anything so um feel free to do that um and i know tijen that this is part of your methodology that you use when coaching and when you're also training other coaches to work with their clients um, to help people become more resilient how is this related to your neurological approach to coaching 
Yeah, we talked about that a little bit last week, right? When we are in uh, trauma, we're facing anything um, larger than, as I mentioned earlier, ex we experienced before. Our nervous system automatically goes often. <laughs> I won't say for yeah. everybody, but often goes into the fear response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, then we won't necessarily understand we still have choice in the matter. Yeah. That, we lose, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, yeah, I agree. That makes a lot of sense. Fear takes over and it feels very black and white. Like, oh, we can go into lose our power, feel powerless. This thing is bigger than me. I, oh, what can I do? Can do nothing. So what you're offering is a perspective there of, okay, we can intervene in one piece of it. It's a way to calm, calm the fear, respond to the fear. I don't know what the word would be, but. It's actually becoming aware of the fear. Because when we are not aware of it, we sense it, we feel it somatically in our system. Like the shoulders get tied, depending on the person. For me, always <laughs> the shoulders and the hip. <laughs> But um, you can know from your own system that where it is, is it showing up? But we don't necessarily understand we are having um, under the influence experience, fear under the fear influence experience. So when we're under the influence of fear, we often do not recognize we still have the free will. We can make choices. And so when we are coaching around this and connecting the people to what they value and they are still capable of doing, then it's going to create that empowerment energy. Mm -hmm. Then the fear is going to lessen and they will start to make other choices or they start doing other things. For example, I was uh, coaching one of my students uh, earlier in the week, and she is an executive coach. She came to the session feeling frustrated that um, some team members didn't do the job enough um, in the level that it needed to be. And her first response was, now I have to stay and do all these things and oh goodness so once i started asking questions around that she realized that even asking her what is it in part of you need to do what is it the part of someone else needs to do yeah then she realized, oh, yeah, I have other resources <laughs> and this can go to somebody and that can go to somebody. And then she's yeah. like, I don't need to stay overnight to work on it. But that's that's the that's how we operate. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that as women, that's something that we tend to do more when things go wrong? We're like, OK, I'll come in, I'll save it, I'll fix it. And we sacrifice ourselves to get the result. Is that is that a human experience from your coaching? kind of history is that something that as women we tend to do more because I really identify with that like oh it didn't work so now I'll, you know go in save the day and and feel miserable about it sometimes afterwards you know <laughs> always afterwards <laughs> yeah <laughs> well I think that um over functioning is often indicative of a childhood trauma that something mm -hmm. happens and we take responsibility of it at the early age like cat dies and you think, oh, they died because of me. Mm. Dad dies, That's you tough. think it's because That's of tough. me. So therefore, we get into this over-functioning and superhuman uh, roles to yeah. just save the world so that no, nothing else goes wrong. I am um, coming from a large Turkish family. We often, and my mom was the youngest bride in the whole family, so everybody's, every problem was talked in our house. I used to think that, okay, I cannot be happy when everybody else is miserable, so I have to make everybody happy. That's what my thought was, and that stayed with me for the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> right? So we have these programs in our nervous system, 
in our consciousness that we need to almost recover, uncover first in through the neurologic coaching. Once that is understood what that program is, then we can recover from it. Yeah, thank you. We have an, an interesting comment here. So the question is, I was wondering if you could talk more about past life trauma, how it shows up differently than childhood trauma or ancestral trauma and how to begin to heal it. Do you have any thoughts on that, Tijen? Yeah, so the my language is that uh, parallel lives <laughs> in the quantum realities, different lives. So in our system, as, as um, we are, this physical system is not, the only system, right? We have layers and layers. So every experience somewhere is in that system. And there is also, I call it genie in the bottle, genie out of the bottle. So some of our spirit is in this bottle, genie mm -hmm. in the bottle, and some of our spirit is out of this bottle. <laughs> And there is still a communication with the, with the genie in the bottle, genie out of the bottle. So therefore, there is an informing to this reality. Mm -hmm. So every reality is broadcasting to one another to the Akashic records. And therefore, whether the trauma has occurred in this reality, which is going to be more potent and imprinting larger in mm -hmm. this life, or in another reality informing in here, there is not distinction, but only distinction I have observed is the potency. And, and therefore, sometimes, um, again, that informing can actually rip uh, create further similar traumas in person's life because often those uh, experiences that we have in different realities um, are kind of brings us into a family or a mm. culture that carries the same. So therefore, it's not only being informed from another quantum existence but it also being informed in your natural organic environment so um yeah that's what i would say to that okay thank you thank you great question and feel free to throw more questions there in the chat that's what the space is for so i appreciate that well tijan tell us a little bit more too so how does this topic that we're talking about today show up in coaching conversations that you would have yeah, I think that when I, we are discussing whatever the traumatic event is for somebody, then there is a sensation of loss of power. Mm -hmm. It comes up, I can't do anything. Oh, now, like that example that I have given about my student client. Okay. Oh, now I have to do this and I have to make everybody happy. And there is this idea. It's a big idea, a frustrating idea, and there is the helplessness around it. Mm -hmm. So that's that, um, as some of my students know, that I call it ding, ding, ding event. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I want to hear coach. more about that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, pay attention, stay alive. There is this trauma is coming up. Yeah. So that's the information for coach to say, Okay, so, and, and there are traditional coaching questions, which I do not like and I don't recommend, but okay. people often ask, oh, what can you control about this? Because to me, it's not about controlling things. Yeah. It is about expressing the self freely and feeling in power, not necessarily, because the control is often like a Band-Aid. You control something. But right. um, managing and, and, and appreciating it's something that we do puts us back into our own spirit. That's how yeah. I yeah. yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. Oh, a question I had from earlier. If you see me being distracted, it's because my cat is determined to <laughs> knock my laptop where I have it off of it onto the ground. I'm very <laughs> curious um, about what's going on today. So she wants to be nearby, but I'm a little That's all right. We can have her with us. <laughs> it's also life. Life has things happen. So um, one question that, that stayed with me from before 
you mentioned the fear response in the mo in moments here of of trauma and then you talked about finding kind of a smaller um piece that we can work with of of a situation to feel like we're influencing and and exercising some influence over what we can in the situation how how do we feel the fear response come up in the body i mean this might be a um kind of obvious thing we think oh well this is how i feel fear but what are you noticing as kind of the general things that come up in the body with fear you mentioned tension in the shoulders what else are the signs that we should pay attention to yeah i think that this is why that i don't necessarily like having standard questions because everybody is different right so I was giving examples from my own body. But what right. happens is that often there is a palpitation, some anxiety, just like when you first fall in love, because anxiety and fear are very similar sensations. Sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that would be an indication. And there is often heaviness and helplessness so um, people carry that on their uh, neck if they feel like they can't talk mm. um, people feel the, on their shoulders if they feel like the tendency over functioning oh no i have to do everybody's thing <laughs> yeah, sure. mm -hmm. and people may feel in their legs like they can't move if they feel like they trapped into something um, did not in the stomach so it's going to be different but often what I find in from my somatic training and coaching mm -hmm. is um, there is often an also nodding in the stomach along with the heart having a different rhythm mm -hmm. when there is the uh, fear there is often something also in the stomach that indicates and um then then the muscular response comes with tension it. yeah mm -hmm. okay good thank you i just wanted to hear hear yeah. that because i think it's important to um like you said create more awareness so that maybe gives us some clues where to pay attention yeah. to something we might might not recognize out front as fear but to know where to pay attention to yeah so, yeah. Jamie, let me show the client and uh, watching people that uh, participants my sure. main tool for this. Okay. Once you recognize, you need a hairband. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's going to be like, stop it. That's going to kind of inform the nervous system. Interesting. Stop the flow, come back to the center and choose. Very good. All yeah. right. That's so good. It's a small investment. <laughs> I know I always have one in my pocket. So <laughs> that's good. I don't know if anyone else can relate to that. Who else carries a, a hair tie in your pocket or somewhere close by most of the time? <laughs> well, and tell us, um, I know you always have interesting things to say as well about how a person can coach ourselves even around these topics. So how can we coach ourselves about around finding something we can manage and value in, in the midst of a traumatic or challenging situation. Yeah, I think that um, it was just a good segue, right? When you recognize something is happening fearful in your body, then return to the center and then choose. Okay, what can I do? I even say that um, even in the, let's say, God forbid, <laughs> you are lying down in a hospital with an IV, right? You mm -hmm. can't function much, but you can say, all oh, right, I can actually consume the IV. Okay. I can blink my eyes, I can breathe, whatever it is that we can all, always find something. So um, depending on the situation, return back to the body and center whatever the centering exercise is. But we need to stop the nervous flow first. Mm -hmm. And this was just one tool that I shared. Mm -hmm. um, I, because this is kind of gender free. You can to be a man or a woman and find a bracelet that works for you or a gender mm -hmm. neutral, whatever it is that everybody can wear a bracelet. And um, that will be just a simple way to do it. But other ways to, more we are aware. I think we talked about this in our first video, 
more we be, do our uh, meditation, become more aware of what is happening in our reality, what are we happening in our body, then we can uh, coach ourselves better to choose something. Yeah. That sounds great. Well, for everyone that's listened today, um, and you know, we had some people comment they've taken away some things of value from this, that it really resonated for them. What would be some kind of final points you'd like to highlight to share and have people think about? Um, I can share them. We can also ask people to see what they are taking away in their comments, right? Yeah. I yeah. would like to encourage everybody to take a look at their lives and understand the things they really value because values are some things that we are often learned. And when we come arrive to the midlife, we start to feel like those clothes that don't fit you anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we don't recognize that we need to re-evaluate what the values are. So get intimate with your values and around that find the things that matters to you so that the more you sense the fear and trauma and whatever it is, connect to that because that's the value you chosen now. It's not mm -hmm. given to you anymore. You chose that value. And what are the things that you can do to contribute to your value to honor you? It's beautiful, thank you. Thank yeah, you. and for those listening, what have you taken away from this um, conversation? What has stuck for you? Feel free to leave it. Yeah. in the comments we'd love to know i'll give you there a second yeah and for some reason my comment section is frozen so i'm not seeing any comments um, i'll read them to you i read i've read you the ones that have come up so far so if we get another one i'll read it out loud i also like that because for those who watch the recording they can't see the comments so i try yeah. to read through them Thank so that we can have them in the recordings you are very good at this and while we're waiting for that i will say that um if the uh, viewers are interested in this learning more, mm -hmm. um, Neurologic Approach to Coaching Training coming up in June, and I already started posting the pre-class assignments. So okay. <laughs> I would encourage people to sign up if they are considering um, so that they get to read some material before the class starts and get their practicum clients. That's a deep yeah. learning experience that's coming up. And I have next week talk at the National Board Health and Wellness Coaching mm -hmm. uh, Quarterly Forum about holistic listening, how to listen better. Beautiful topic. Can we talk about that too sometime Absolutely, later? Absolutely, <laughs> yes, because that is only open to the nation board uh, right. certified health and wellness coaching. Yes, let's talk about it here. Okay. That'd be and, wonderful. Yeah, and then I have a next following week again on Friday, I will do a complimentary demo for holistic coaching. Yeah. And, yeah, it's open to all the coaches. And obviously, May mentor sessions are open, and um, and then there is another uh, talk coming up with the IC at Orange County. Uh, good. Yeah. Well, if you're not following Tijen here on Instagram already, please do do follow her. She's tagged here in the post, but it's um, the at sign Tijen Zinko all together, right? Right. Correct. Yeah. Do follow her. We have a couple questions, comments here, Tijen. Let me read them to you, to us out loud. One that says, always love listening to these interviews. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. Lovely. Another one that says, interesting how you differentiate what you control versus what you are empowered to do. Yeah, I love that too. That was very, very useful. And then we do have a question. What's the difference between the neurological course versus your somatic or polyvagal courses? Yes, the polyvagal courses I rebranded. It's called neurology course. <laughs> ah, okay, there we go. <laughs> because I was taking it further than those theories. Um, last time I ran the course, I received feedback. So then I incorporated those into the new version. And so it's now called Jenko Method Neurologic Approach to Coaching, mm -hmm. taking beyond uh, NLP and polyvagal 
theories. That's basically what we are doing. And the somatic coaching, um, they are both of these coaching in Packs in the body centric body awareness, but the nerve, nervous system is like our circuitry electrical system, electrical wiring, um, versus that there are somatic system has more physicality in biology, chemistry, and, and then there is also I teach energetic coaching, which is mm -hmm. Right now I have a small group that is not advertised, but the dif distinction between those two is that in one, we focus more into the body and ailments around uh, the body and how to respond to each ailment, body by body, like a respiratory system, reproductive system and all that. So the coaches learn how to engage around those ailments with the clients and the neurologic uh, uh, coaching takes it into the nervous system and how thoughts are working how our conditioning and cognition works yeah. and re reprogram those so it's very uh, different but very complementary yeah well it's it's incredible because with all the things you've studied as long as you've been in coaching all the things you do you, you couldn't have a more complete picture of you know the human wellness from all perspectives kind of to be um seen and worked with through through your method and through your classes so i appreciate that um we've got one more question and yes thank you everyone who's sticking around for and sending these questions thank you for joining us the question is can we find all of the other offerings you have from your email list as well or do they need to check back on instagram Yes, so I don't necessarily have an email list. I will highly encourage people to go to jankocoaching.com and subscribe to the website. When you do, then every time I'm posting a new event, they will be notified. Gotcha. Um, I prefer that often, unless that I have specific thing, I feel like it matches with a student or so, mm -hmm. then I'll send them. But um, I prefer uh, following my own coaching method that it's a pull information, not a push. Uh, oh, I think that that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. So there, there we go. There's the answer. All right. Well, Tijen, it was, as always, beautiful talking to you. We have one more of these chats next Thursday, same time, same place. And we'll be hearing about the fourth um, aspect of resilience that Tijen will share with us. Give us a heads up. What is the top? What is the focus next week? Yes, the focus next week is going to be about integration. How do we take all those steps and embody? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank Come you. back same time, same place next week. We'll be here. And if you like these um, coaching coffee chats, you know, leave a comment here on Lemon Rebellion's page. What are some more topics you'd like us to talk about? Um, with Tijen and with the other coaches in the network, because this is a wonderful space to be able to do this and share with everyone and, and have some interaction too. So, all right, everyone have an awesome Thursday and we'll be back next week. Good to see you, everybody. Good Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Again. Take care. Bye. Bye.